in scripture god speaks of setting boundaries to the waters he says to the waters thus far shall you go and here shall your proud waves halt okay and the idea is that water that the very nature of water is to seek a level right if there are no boundaries the waters would overflow the world but god puts it in boundaries what did god do at the time of the flood he removed the boundaries and so what this means is the water is not acting contrary to the nature that god had given it rather god is removing his restraints such that the water is taking its natural course this is similar to what you see paul saying in romans 1 in romans 1 when you see the those who suppress the truth about god known to them by natural revelation as well as their own internal disposition as image bearers all men know god but paul says they suppress the truth in unrighteousness when these people are are described in very lawless ways right exchanging the natural desire paul refers to this as altogether abominable and he, he, he enumerates other sins there as well but paul says that people are doing this having been given up or over by god Now what does that mean? Does that mean that God is here putting evil into them, causing them to do something evil? No. The idea is that man's heart is depraved. That's the whole point that Paul is making in Romans 1, and he's going to make the same point about the Jews in Romans 2, so that he can say in Romans 3 that the whole world is sinful and accountable to God and needs this gospel of free grace. What Paul is saying is that God gives people over to the sinfulness of their hearts he removes those boundaries that he had otherwise put in place keeping men from carrying out all the evil that's in their heart to do man would do more evil uh think about all the different things that god uses to restrain people i know plenty of people who say they would have done this but didn't do it because it would have shamed their parents they didn't do this because they might have gone to jail they didn't do this because they would have lost their business they didn't do that so these are among those things that god uses to restrain people but all it takes is for god to remove certain restraints and people will naturally take certain courses and so we can say that people act according to their own nature and desires which is sinful and still carry out God's purpose because God is sovereign over those restraints that otherwise hold people in check and the the removal of them but now we also have to say we we also speak of man not being free in the sense of righteousness the natural man does not naturally desire god the natural man flees from god that's what we see adam doing in the garden and his descendants have been doing it ever since That's why Paul says that no man seeks after God. People are not naturally going to him. In Romans 8 it, it tells us that the mind of the natural man, the mind set on the flesh is hostile towards God. It doesn't submit to the law of God and cannot do so. Right? So it doesn't mean that people when they sin aren't doing what they want, but it means that it's not in their nature to want or in their ability to do that which is righteous, that which is good. In order for that to happen the spirit has to open the heart. The spirit has to give a new heart. That's the problem that the Old Testament keeps saying the Messiah is going to deal with when he comes. Israel even though they were circumcised in the flesh did not have circumcised hearts. Moses promised in Deuteronomy 30 that God was going to circumcise the heart. That's the promise picked up on by the prophets like Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31, Ezekiel 36. God's going to circumcise the heart. He's going to give you a new heart, put a new spirit within you, write his law on your hearts, enable you to walk in his ways. And in fact, one of my favorite statements is found in Jeremiah when he says, "I will put my fear into your hearts so that you will never depart from me." That's a precious promise. and you know watching people balk at this sort of thing i think you know you guys are creating your own misery right all, all these people that want to put salvation in their own fickle hands